Hey, Dr. Deb Matthew here. I am here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Ashu Goyle, who is from Scottsdale, Arizona, and his practice is Integrated Spine Pain and Wellness. He specializes in pain management and wellness and also offers hormone therapy to his patients. So can you tell us how that fits in with what you do? Thank you, Deb. Yes, so um, I see patients who have all kinds of pain syndromes, primarily back pain, spine pain, neck pain, knee pain, hip pain, and joint pain. One of the most common complaints when they come in, in addition to pain, is fatigue and lack of energy and brain fog. And many times they're also complaining of being overweight and not having the energy to exercise and lose weight. These can all be signs and symptoms of hormone deficiency. So one of the things we offer is hormone testing to see if there is a hormone imbalance that we can optimize to bring wellness and a holistic approach to their pain management. How do hormones affect pain? Sure, that's a great question. So um, one of the most common side effects of pain, if you will, is stress. Patients get stressed out because of their pain. They can't do the things they love to do. Um, pain affects their sleep. And this can in turn lead to an elevation in cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. And most of us are familiar with cortisol and uh, the negative effects it can have on the body. It can cause inflammation throughout the body. It can cause fatigue. It can disrupt sleep. It can weaken our immune system. And all these things can manifest as pain throughout our body. Hormones affect our experience of pain. How does pain affect our hormone levels? Sure. When you're under a constant pain, chronic pain, people, for example, they'll sprain their back or they'll have a herniated disc. The pain's there every single second of every day. It adversely affects their mental state, which can in turn increase cortisol, which can lead to that cascade we just talked about and increase their perception of pain. So you mentioned that some of your patients struggle with their weight. How do hormones impact weight? Sure. Um, so when patients have, let's say, low testosterone, right, they're not building lean muscle mass. And so they'll get more truncal obesity, they'll get fatigued easily, they'll lose their energy and ability to work out and build muscle. So um, this in turn will cause a patient to gain weight. Our stress hormone, cortisol, again, will cause us to retain fluid, water, and also retain visceral fat. This can cause us to gain weight as well. So optimizing these hormones can ideally help patients lose weight. Thyroid hormone is another one. Yeah. So a lot of patients, when they're in chronic pain, their thyroid hormone gets out of balance as well. And so their metabolism drops and tanks for some people, and they in turn gain weight. All of this extra weight can cause joint pain, knee pain, hip pain, back pain. So ideally we wanna optimize every aspect of the patient, including hormones, to manage their pain effectively. Do men have problems with their hormones too? Sure they do. Um, the most common would be testosterone. So as we age, especially over the age of 40, men can, uh, their testosterone production can decrease significantly. So one way to optimize their testosterone is to check their levels and then supplement if needed. Men can also be affected by low thyroid. Mm -hmm. So men with low thyroid can also benefit from thyroid supplementation, which can increase their metabolism and keep them healthier, improve their immune system and allow them to lose weight. And then also cortisol is another way, yeah. So Devin, I'll just talk about hormones. Um, one question that comes up in my clinic quite a bit is the safety and efficacy of these uh, hormone replacement therapies. So how safe are these therapies and what concerns should patients have? Yeah, you know, 20 years ago, there was a study that raised some concerns about breast cancer risk in women on hormone replacement therapy. And we've had the last 20 years to reanalyze the study. And what the data actually shows is that overall, women on hormone replacement therapy have more benefits. They have less mortality from any cause. So, so less likely to die from any reason. There's less colon cancer, less lung cancer. Um, overall, women do better on hormone replacement therapy than they do without hormones. However, there's different ways that we can do hormone replacement therapy. There are synthetic pills, that, which is how we always used to give um, women hormones, that do carry a very tiny risk of breast cancer in one certain kind, but there are many other options. And so what's really important that, is that women need to be able to sit down and have a conversation with their doctor about their personal risks and benefits, what the different options for the different types of hormone replacement therapy, so that they can choose something that's gonna be right for them, that's gonna help them to feel better so that they can get the benefits of the hormones and really don't have to worry about the risks in the way that um, used to be the case 20 years ago. Oh, that's fantastic. So is there one version that's safer than another pellets versus 
uh, injections versus oral versus uh, compounded like bioidentical hormones from plants? Yeah, so the kind of hormones that I think make the most sense are the bioidentical hormones. Okay. And bioidentical just means that the hormone is an exact match to the hormone that our bodies used to make. So at least in theory, your body can't tell the difference between whether it came from your ovaries or from the pharmacy. Sure. Um, that type of hormone is available in all of those different ways okay. that you said. So it can come as creams and patches and pills. We can get it from um, the regular pharmacies, often covered by your health insurance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get it from specialty pharmacies called compounding pharmacies because then we can do some more precise dosing. But there's actually a tremendous number of different options, which is really great news for women and also for men. But the most important thing is you need to have a provider that you can work with who's going to be on your team with you, who's going to have these conversations so that you can make the best choices for yourself. Excellent. And the key is to be partnered with the patient and we work together as a team. Yeah. How do hormones play a role in your regenerative medicine process? That's a great question. So I practice non-traditional pain management. My focus and my approach is much, much more holistic. So I like to tell patients I practice holistic pain management. And so one of the things we want to optimize is the patient's overall well-being, not just their physical well-being, but their mental well-being as well. And I feel that hormones are an integral part of that. So by optimizing patients' hormone levels, we can optimize their energy levels and their overall mood and their overall function while we're managing the pain at the same time.